good deer pops up on my radar. And let's hope I hit it real well this time. So second weekend of the hunt, just headed down there to meet up with Scott, Ethan, and Armin. Scott and Ethan been down there all week. Uh, Armin's been hunting the weekends. I finally got a full week off this year to hunt, so maybe I'll have some success this time. I just come down the center of the gulch. <laughs> the gulch. Center of the valley. Once I hit the opening there, then I get up to the trees where you were talking about, or where, where we spotted them at anyways. Get there. See what it looks like when I get down there, whether I go high or it just comes right across. I just try to use the trees. We were up on the ridge behind me, blasting. We saw this uh, decent sized 2x3 just shredding his freaking velvet off. We waited, let him do his thing. It took him about a half hour. He got all of his velvet shredded off. He's bleeding a little bit. It's all red, antlered. I know he's hard horned. He went, we watched him go bed down. So <clears throat> we know right where he's sitting. I'm going to try and make a play on him. This is going to be my first legit stock on a bedded down deer, so wish me luck. Hopefully uh, I can be successful on this and get my first archery deer. Yeah, I think I can get him in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I hate, yeah. The problem is he's like right on the edge of the biggest fucking patch of thick shit right in there. So I'm sure when we, he jumped out, we still didn't even see him come out. But just, yeah, work your way up that trail and... Don't lose his ass. That's the biggest thing. Is like as long as you don't lose him, then we made the right choice. Yeah. Uh, it sucks because like when we planned this out, <coughs> he was sitting in like a perfect spot. It's like he's out in the middle of nowhere, like no man's land. Yeah, even dude. Though, <coughs> even though he could see you probably from further out, you could still make a shot from the edge of the cover. It was fine. We got close. I just. Yeah. He was in a good spot. I mean, it was going to be a lot of noise to get into him. Never never seen him. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So, shot at another one. Got a bloody arrow right here. Broken broadhead. It looks like he broke it off pretty quickly. So, uh, right now I'm waiting for Scott Brandt. going to help me look for a blood trail. Um, and we'll see what we can find. Uh, I think it was a... Is either a it was a spike or maybe a small two point. So we'll see. He was hanging out with two other bucks. It was two other three points, but he was hanging out pretty close to me at a 45. So I shot at him. The other two were maybe 70, ah, eh, probably 80, 90 yards away. So yeah, keep you up to date. So we got good news. Armin said he hit a deer over here. So he shot a deer. He hit, he hit. Armin shot a deer over here. <laughs> So we're going to go help him track blood. Let's see if we can't get his first deer on the ground. Get a tag notched for this guy. Oh. Armin found his arrow. So he's missing a couple inches up here in the broadhead. And he's got about that much blood on the tip of this thing. So 
So judging by that, I know he went between the second and third rib. And I think he missed the front rib cage and chipped it on the back rib cage. And that's about the depth. And then it snapped off and then fell out. It's got to be true. Got another little spot here. Okay. So that's small. That's just like last time. There we go. Damn it. Is that light blood? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. You can see his path. Booked it way over there. Armin. Follow the blood trail and you can find the fucking gear. The end. Norman, what are you feeling right now? Uh, frustration and sadness. You see that roots from your childhood? <laughs> no. As a child, I never wanted to kill deer. I loved Bambi. Now I want to shoot his dad. Or her dad. So you have father issues? Well, maybe a little. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, that one on the left arm. That's the one I had stock on on Saturday morning. <clears throat> oh yeah, he's got he's a he's got five on his right. Staring at him. Get the fuck off me, bro. What the fuck are you doing? So as you can see, we uh, we fell on another stock on those two, two big deer in the exact same valley that we saw, that we went on that first stock on Saturday. That one was the exact same deer. Then that one on the right, he's a five by four. So I don't think we spooked him out of that valley, so we'll try to relocate him again and keep after him. I've been chasing this deer, and I'm calling Testy. First time I saw him, I was in this valley and I was scoping out some does. I look up to my left, and all I could see was a big body. I glassed it up and I just saw a big pair of testicles hanging. He lifted his head, and sure enough, it's a big buck. Pretty, pretty good size, 30 points. So I went back to where he was at, where I couldn't stalk in on him last night. I went back tonight. Ten minutes before light, or ten minutes before dark, he came over the top and he was coming downhill at an angle. And I was just waiting. I was about a hundred yards away, and I was waiting for him to feed lower, and he went behind some trees. Last time I ranged him, it was at 101. And then he went behind the tree line, and I was waiting for him to come out the other side, and it was probably going to be about 80 yards, but I was going to see how close he was going to keep coming down the hill and feed towards me. But he just never came out. He stayed in there, you know, for the last 10 minutes of light until I couldn't see. I just backed out really slow. We're going to see if he'll come back in tomorrow night. Give him another try. I might have to go higher up the hill to wait on him so that when he does come out, I can already be within shooting range. And then I'll, I'll be in here every night. So This is the canyon entrance. This blue jug. Why is that an extra peak on top with the Dumford? It's a cedar tree. <clears throat> and this right here. Imagine about this one. <laughs> this is the face of the hill. 
There's no canyon there. Canyon. The <laughs> jug is is a canyon. Okay. Imagination. Face to the east. Okay. Entrance. Before the other canyon. Entrance. You come in. There's the face. There's. That's the canyon. <laughs> there's a face with a cedar tree. <laughs> Another cedar tree. <laughs> okay, that's a happy cedar tree. He got eyes. About halfway up, there. Patch, 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 patch. Perfect. It was a perfect representation of the patch of cedars on the hill. Each one of those bags is a cedar. Yes. Okay. Purple scrub, blue sagebrush. Okay. Okay. He comes bags over the, of chips, cedar. He comes <laughs> over the top. He comes mid hill, about towards the green lays. Okay. Gotcha. And then he stops. I'm planning on sitting next to a Cheeto, okay? One of you Where should you go. Where do you want me? You can go sit over here to the left of the Doritos. Why am I the furthest away from Because that's where you wanted to put me, jackass. <laughs> and then, Brat, you can have some fucking grandma cream cookies. I love me some grandma cream cookies. In case he goes short. That's the plan. Okay. Okay. I will show you exactly where the Lay's Doritos and cream cookies are at when we're there. I want to be. I want to be over by the this canyon. You want to be over here by the fucking munchies? Yep. Don't okay. put me. Just don't let, put me in. Let him have it. We'll kill this big guy. Okay. Working on Scott's plan. I'm over by the Doritos bag. He's by the Lay's bag. So we kind of covered this from the top and bottom. Came out of the clearing there, looked down. They were telling me they saw some big two points come up over the top. I hadn't made it down the hill far enough to get sitting where I should have been maybe when they came up over the top. But anyways, I came over down through that clearing. It was a range of 76 yards. Missed wide left, kind of rushed it a little bit, but that's the... Uh, repercussions of missed shot that gets stuck in sagebrush so hopefully we can try and relocate them in the next few days and have another chance so i i don't know if i was down far enough where you guys were looking right trying to work my way down but i had a really tar hard time like and when you guys were like, oh, I think you said we were in, you were in position or something like that. Yeah. And I, I said, are you in position? And then I didn't hear anything back. So I didn't know if I was supposed to be pushing down still or waiting, you know what I mean? Like, come out, right? And I was like, there's a doe in the middle between two sets of trees. And I'm on the say, I'm on like the edge of one of these like, round bastards, right? Mm -hmm. I peek back and there's, I don't even know how big he was, but and so I range it and it was kind of bouncing. So I'm getting like 101, I range the doe, she's at 73, go back to him. 76, 90, 80, 76, 76, 75, 80, 75, all right, fuck it. Well, 76, come back, I don't know. <laughs> Rushed it, rushed it. But I just shot behind him, I missed. And he was kind of quartering up. Mm -hmm. Like I said, he was turned facing right at me. I was trying to hold the front shoulder. So I didn't have a whole broadside either, right? Mm -hmm. I rushed it and flung it, <laughs> got back. Well, the height looked good, just pushed it out behind him. Yeah. And then well, hunting. If anybody ever wanted to know, this is it. You kick back on the fort lane. Let me get the full extent. <sighs> Scott, where you going? He's got boom. What do you call that technique? Steadiness. It doesn't look that steady. This is how you call in deer. No. <laughs> when the sun comes up, the valley you're looking at is that way. I'm just gonna tape it to the side of my wheeler like this. I'm not a wheelie, I'm just a deer.
Mule deer hunt with a bow, they said. It'd be fun, they said. Spot and stock, they said. I can't even spot. <laughs>